All right, people, welcome to episode 246 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and uh, this week is a special week. I mean, especially for a guy like me. I'm a big Georgia Southern fan. Uh, love the school, love everything about it. You know, actually, you know, went to the school and um, spent a lot of time at that school. I didn't finish at school. I ended up having to go somewhere else to finish my last few credits, but that's another story for another day. Maybe we'll talk about that. But nevertheless, uh, Georgia Southern is playing against a rival. Yes, I made a video about this on my YouTube channel. I'm not even going to go there, but it is a rival. We're going to dig deep into that. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about the Falcons as what they can do against the Panthers with uh, what's going on with that team, um, at, you know, the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons and see what happens with that. Um, but I really want to focus more on the Georgia Southern Eagles. So hopefully you guys stick around. Thank you guys for all the support lately on the YouTube channel. Uh, guys on the Patreon, you uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you as well for the guys that are on YouTube watching all the stuff that's coming out. You know, we have a conference realignment coming up. I'm going to talk about that more in depth once we get confirmation of the other schools supposed to be joining. We just got um, news about Southern Miss and Old Dominion. That is awesome. Joining the Sun Belt. And we're also going to have, uh, you know, uh, we're still waiting on James Madison and we're still waiting on Marshall. So hopefully that will, you know, come to fruition. And it's just going to make the Sun Belt more stronger. So um, that's going to be awesome. Uh, thank you guys for the everybody who's been watch, listening on the Podcast Avenue. Thank you guys. If you don't mind, give this podcast a five-star rating. Let people know what I'm doing over here. Share the podcast. Also, this will be on the YouTube channel. If you're watching it on YouTube, just as a reminder, you can watch or listen to this on your uh, favorite podcast platform. So you can just download it from those avenues and listen whenever instead of just using YouTube all day. You know, it's just, just so many different uh, options you have there. All right, let's get into this. Um, I have a real big issue with this game coming up. And I did a little bit of research on how Georgia State feels about us because I already know how we feel. Um, and, I mean, I'm not saying all the fan base does because I do have some guys um, that follow me on Twitter, some other fans that I know, even some guys I went to school with, they started to look at this as a rival. But what's really disheartening to me I saw the press conference with some of the students. I'm not going to get into the students. I don't really like to talk about students when I necessarily disagree with them because that's not, you know, that's not the way I roll. But when you have the coach, the interim coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles, um, Kevin Whitley, saying stuff like this is not a rivalry, I think this is the really uh, a wrong um, way to look at this game. Two teams in the same state. They're competing against each other. Players are probably playing against each other throughout high school. Some of them probably knew each other their entire lives, playing against each other at, 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 at two pretty big colleges right now. I mean, you say what you want. These two teams that was, you know, Georgia Southern was in the FBS. I mean, I'm sorry, FCS and was a powerhouse in FCS. Georgia State just came on the scene in 2010, and in 11 years, they had some fairly decent success. So, you got two pretty big schools in a pretty good area where recruiting is a, is, is a big deal. These guys have a lot uh, at stake when it comes to recruiting. And you got one team that's looking at us like this is a rivalry and we really want to smack them in the mouth every time we play them where our school is not looking at it like that. And I find that very troubling. Now, as a, a program, um, you have a lot of people that was here, you know, for a long time, and I'm not here to to, to the point and push, you know, uh, point anybody out or, 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 or belittle anybody or anything of that nature. But you have people in this in in, in uh this circle that saying that this is not a rivalry. We let it be a rivalry. This, that, and the third. Um, listen, just because you know. Things happen a certain way because of the history behind both teams. We may want to look at it as big brother, little brother, or whatever the case may be. You may think that that team is beneath us, but 
make no mistake, these guys came into the league pretty much what they came into FBS a year before us so, or uh, at the same time or something like that. They are ready, willing and ready to smack us in the mouth at any time, have brag- bragging rights over the state, and they're willing to make us look like little brother at every chance they get. They want to have this competition to be one of the highest points of their uh of their, you know, season. And and you don't make rivals as far as, oh, I'm just gonna go out and push this person around. You add things to a game that makes things important. When you look at things like Appalachian State and look at what happened with us against them, look how that turned into a rivalry back in the 80s up until now. You know, they didn't just come to us and say, you know, we're going to make this a rivalry. They they tagged things along with each game to make those games significant. So every time we saw them, it was going to be a problem. And right now, you know, Georgia State is making that case. They're not just saying that we're a rival because we, we want to be. They're saying we're a rival because not only that we can, you know, beat you, we can make things hard for you within in the state. And uh, I'm not saying that that's happening, but they have the ability to do that. We need to be very careful playing this team. I mean, and, and, and that's one of the reasons why it is a four to three um you know, uh, record between the two. And it could have been very, it could have been worse if we weren't, you know, you know, it could be worse depending on what, how things played out in certain games. We put our foot on their neck at certain times, but it should have been that like that from day one. But you had situations where teams weren't prepared or another, none, none of that type of stuff was uh, implemented. And it's disheartening to me to see that even our coach, and I'm not trying to knock the coach, but he's making a big mistake by saying, like, look, this team is not, this is not a rivalry. Those guys are going to come down to Statesboro looking for a fight, and that's what we need to do. Now, I'm going to get into the statistics. I'm going to talk about some players. I want to talk about what we can or can't do against this team because they're going to come with it. You know, this, I mean, Georgia State, I, 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 I'll I, put it like this. I never dislike the, the school. I dislike the, I dislike the football team because they thought they were all that. But you know what? Looking at what they've done in the last seven games against us, even though we did blow them out a couple of times, 38 to 10, we didn't 69 to 31, a couple other games we, you know, we, you know, ran them out of their own stadium. But make no mistake, they are, you know, trying their best to be a prominent team in the, in the Sun Belt. They went up to Tennessee and beat Tennessee as an FBS team. So that, that put a lot of eyes on them. They turn around and almost beat Auburn. They had some pretty competitive games against other teams. We need to be careful because with us, ever since we moved to the FBS, what have we done? We always hang our hats on the game that we had against Florida back in 2013. I think it was our last game as an FCS opponent. We hang our hat on that. We turn around and we hang our hat on us, you know, the 2011 game against uh, Alabama. Well, we, 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 we got beat in that game, but we did do pretty well. And that's the, you know, the infamous 10 horn, uh, is the infamous 10 horn uh, soundbite by Nick Saban. That's awesome. But when you have situations like what this team is doing, we need to be very careful. Now, before I get in, I said I'm going to talk about the, the students, but I'm going to compare, you know, I don't have the sound bite to what Coach Whitley said, but I'm going to let you know what Coach Sean Elliott said on two occasions about this rivalry, about this team, about what we're doing against, what, about what they're doing against us. I'm going to give you two sound bites on what they did. I mean, what they said and how he feels about this rivalry. If this doesn't make you upset and make you want to slap them up and down the field, kick them, kick their, you know, what's up and down the field. I don't know what to tell you. We need to stop looking at this. And I'm not talking about all the fans. 
And I'm not talking about, you know, the, I'm not necessarily talking about the, well, I, I will say this. I'm talking about the players. I'm not going to point nobody out, but I'm talking about the players and the coach. If this doesn't fire you up, I don't know what else will. Because Sean Elliott and company is not playing with us. They're not. I'm, run the first clip. I'm going to let you guys hear what he said. Run it. You know, I understand they, their fan base probably doesn't consider it a rivalry for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm okay with that. But I can tell you one thing we do. Um, we're fired up to go to Statesboro. I, I love their environment. I love their passionate fan base. I love everything about going down there because I know uh, they don't like us, and uh, and they're going to do everything in their power to get that, that stadium up. And their, their players are going to be hyped, and ours as well. It just makes for a really exciting contest. Now that's just the first clip. That's just the first clip, and he, and, and, you know, that was from a recent press conference that he had with, you know, at, you know, the the press up there in Atlanta, and you know, it was a little more PC. It was all right, but let me tell you something. This runs deep with them. These guys up there in Atlanta, the guys that y'all claim that don't have a, a a real campus, that don't have a real football stadium, they stole they stole Turner Field and they can't get nobody in the in the stadium. They can't get anybody to come in and 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 watch their games. Let me tell you what he said after they beat us last year. Let's run the next clip. You know, to tell you the truth, I really don't give a, a damn about what they think. Uh, it's about our football team. It's about our play. It's about our preparation. You know, that's for them to think whatever they want to think. Uh, I, I know with two universities played in the same conference at the Division One FBS level, that, that's pretty important. So uh, it wouldn't matter if it was them or somebody else. This would be an important ball game for us. So, you know, whatever they want to think about it. I think we took the four to three lead in the series, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe you need to ask them that question. Ooh, man, let me tell you. Now, you may not have heard that clip because it's, it's only on one side. That was a mono clip. It's not stereo, so it might not come out of both sides of the speaker. So if you only listen in one ear, you may not be able to hear it. Go back and listen to the opposite side. You can hear it. But, man, let me tell you, Sean Elliott's not playing around. He wasn't. Now, he, like I said, he just did a PC style, you know, uh, uh, answer to the first clip. That second clip was right after the game. And I'm going to tell you, that's how they feel about us. I promise you that's how they feel about us. And for us, like I said, I don't have the clips audio-wise of what Coach Whitley and, company and the rest of our players said about thinking it's not a rivalry. But comparing the two, Georgia State is, is coming for us. And we need to be ready for them. Now, I know this has been a down year for us, whatever the case may be, but we need to get up for this game. We need to treat this game in some cases, we need to treat this game much more uh, important than Appalachian State. Yeah, I said that. And I know you're probably thinking I'm crazy, but no, I'm serious. We may need to start taking this game not much more serious, but just as serious, and maybe in some cases more serious, than the Appalachian State game. Because the last thing we need is for these guys to be the better team in our own state. That that should not happen. Now, I know, and the problem is, you know, we have a lot of arrogance over here. We do. I know we do. And, you know, you got people that still want to run the, the, the triple option and they want to go back to the glory days. And, you know, I watched the old Dominion game with the Taylor Heineke game when, we, when, the, when the triple option was just bomb. And in and, and, and those other games that we played, the game against Florida, triple option was great and all the other great games that we had. But, we need to move on. And I don't want to make this anything about me against other fans or anything like that, or me against the school or whatever. But I got to be honest, we're not playing good ball. We're two and five right now. We're not. We need to get ourselves together so we can be able to compete with these other schools, the teams that we should have beaten, the teams that we should play better. We have the best. We have some of the best talent in the Sun Belt on our team, but we're not adapting. Now, I'm going to tell you how well this team, or lack of how well they've been playing, uh, and uh, and what they can do against us, and what we need to do to combat them, because it is Southern Not State, but we need to treat it as if it's Southern Not State. We're not doing it. All right, Dar Darren Granger is the quarterback for Georgia State, and I'm going to tell you right now. He's looking pretty decent. He's looking good. He's, he's not a world beater, but he's looking pretty good. He's not like on an elite level, but the numbers, touchdown to interception ratio is pretty good. 11 touchdowns to three interceptions. He's completed 60% of his passes, 
58 of 96, 783 yards, averaging eight yards a pass. Cornelius Brown is the backup. I think he's been benched after having somewhat of a, a, a down, a sophomore slump. Not going to get into his numbers too much because we're going to be seeing Granger over Brown. Uh, I'm looking more at this passing game because you already know what it is. We do not defend the pass very well. And with the passing game, they got you got guys like Jamari Thrash. You got C.I.S. Credo. Um, Terrence Dixon. You also have a pretty decent uh, tight end at RB Payne. All those guys have double-digit catches throughout the year, um, and uh, three of them are averaging over 10 yards a catch. You also have Roger Carter, another tight end who also has nine catches already and averaging 11 yards a carry. I mean, 11 yards a catch. Uh, James Thrash, not, uh, Jamari Thrash. I'm sorry, James Thrash. Jamari Thrash, Credo, and Aubrey Payne also have three touchdowns already this season. So out of the 11 touchdowns Granger's thrown, nine of them is going to those three guys. We already know we have a problem in the secondary. We need to work on that fast. Hopefully we've been doing it. We had a long week, and um, that's what we need to be working on. Hopefully we can be able to, to slow them down a little bit because our secondary has not been good. The running game, you got guys like Tucker Gregg. Um, Danny Grange is all um, Darren Grange. Danny Grange. I'm talking about all these professional athletes. Darren Granger is also been, is their second leading attempt rusher, and he's also their second leader rusher. So you also have a dual threat quarterback that's back there who can move around a little bit. Tucker Gregg is their bell cow so far. He's actually averaging 5.8 yards of carry. He has 80 touches for 465. You have another guy, Jameis Williams, is the backup running back. He has 51 carries for 316, 6.2 yards a carry. So offensively, they could be pretty potent. We need to be careful about who we're playing against. Georgia Southern, we need to get our act together. Defensively, you got a lot of guys over here that can rush the quarterback pretty well. Um, uh, uh, Jordan, I, I may say his name wrong, Venizal, I think that's right. He has two sacks on the season. Blake Carroll also has 3.5. Um, those two are your leading solo tacklers. Um, you also have a safety that's also in third place with um, tackles. So they got guys who can come down into the box and probably make some tackles. Or maybe they'll be able to. He's probably been getting tackles in the secondary after, catch, after um, receivers catch the ball, which my issue with us is we're not passing the ball enough. I want to see Cam Ransom get the start, honestly, and play against Georgia State. I'm going to talk about that once we get to that team, I mean our team, and go from there. Statistically, uh, team-wise, they are averaging 24.29 points a game, and their, the opponents are actually scoring more than with 32 points a game. Uh, as far as um, as far as uh, passing, like I said, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I already talked about offense. As far as uh. Yeah, I guess we could talk about total offense. I can get into that. Total offense, um, they have averaged over 388 yards a game. Um, and to the opponents have been uh, uh, actually been able to get 413 yards a game against. They've been that's how much they've been giving up. Defensively, let's see how much we've been. They've been giving up defensively. Uh, as far as passing goes, they begin at 249 yards passing, but we don't pass the ball enough. As far as rushing goes, they've been doing pretty decent rushing. They've been giving up uh, 164 yards uh, a game, only average 3.9 yards. So that doesn't bode well for us as well. We like to run the ball. We like to run the ball a lot, and this is something that we need to you know, get a handle on. Um Hopefully, with the guys like Logan Wright, Joe Green, and company, um, I would love to see Jalen White to get a little bit, uh, get a little bit more, get a little bit of touches as well. And uh, we'll, we, I think we'll be able to run the ball okay because uh, we we have the offensive line to run the ball against anybody, and I think we'll do uh, pretty well in that regard. But will it be enough to beat this team? And, and that's the thing I'm not really sure because uh, defensively. That's where our problem lies. I mean, that that's where the problem lies with us because um offensively, like I said, they're passing. They uh, uh they, they with their passing, they give up I mean they pass 166 yards a game, which is um actually a little bit lower than I thought it'd be. But, you know, 
our secondary suspect. We we're sitting around here making people look, you know, look like really potent in the passing game. So um, that's something we need to work on. Um, like I said, with uh, Granger only having 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, that's pretty good. Can he be had? I mean, our secondary, we are capable of getting some turnovers, but it, we have to get pressure up front. And I think that's where the X factor is going to be. Can they can they run the ball against us like um like they like they're actually capable of? I'm not really sure. They average 221 yards a game, and um, you know, so I I don't think that bodes very really well for them. I think our defense can actually stop their running game, but but that's going to cause them to pass more. That's going to get our secondary a little bit uh gassed. So we need to find a way to get some turnovers if we're able. If we're going to be able to do something. Uh, not only that, if we could keep the ball more, if we can actually keep the ball, and you know, actually get ourselves in position to uh make get some points on the board. You know, we just can't have a lot of three and outs. We can't have a a lot of situations where we drive a little bit and we punt. We need to put the ball in the end zone. Because these guys give up a handful of points. They don't score that much. They only score 24 points a game. I think we're capable of at least matching that if if we can get our offense going. But like I said, I, I just think that we need to pass the ball. We need a more of a balanced attack. You know, and I was looking at these old games, like I said before, with the triple option. I was looking at Jared McKinnon and, you know, what they did a few years, you know, about, you know, about a decade ago when those guys was in here uh, at Statesboro doing a really good job of maintaining the prestige of Georgia Southern. We don't have those players anymore. I mean, Justin Tomlin can't run the option on the center. I don't think he can. I mean, I, I just don't think we have the players for it. We just don't. We have players that, you know, basically that are up to today's standards when it comes to actually playing football. I think we'll do very well in a pistol style uh, offense, a, a RPO style. I think we'll do really good with that. But the thing is, I don't even think our offensive coordinator has that in his arsenal, which which really is, um, a, a, you know, it's really disheartening because, with the plight of the athlete that's been coming in and out of Georgia Southern for the past five, six, seven years, we've never had anything to move around and adapt to what we can do. I mean, we did try with we did a little bit with the spread option or whatever the case may be, and and I'm not saying that it it, it can't work, but we see what happened year in and year out when we just aren't able to do what we want to do with the ball. Even within the ten win season, you look at that and. Um, we were successful um, playing ball, but I don't think we was as successful as we could be. I think a lot of these guys that that played on that team and years afterwards, I think a lot of those guys won games in spite of the offense. Their athleticism did wonders for us. You look at the Camellia Bowl and see what we did against Eastern Michigan. That fourth and ten, Shaw Wirtz got on his got on his um um you know he got on his high horse and ran twenty yards for a first down. You know, I mean, we were we were trying to pass the ball and we was in no man's land. There's been plenty of times where we try to pass the ball and we don't know what we're looking at when we're passing the ball. I mean, it's usually like a play action. You know, um, the team's already looking for uh the option play. One or two guys get behind the defense, and once they get behind the defense, it, it you know we get an open play. We saw it in the RL Carrier um, New Orleans Bowl, same thing, you know. But when we're forced to pass the ball and it's not really in our arsenal, it, it really causes problems. And I think that's something that we need to work on. I, I, let me tell you, if we work on that, we'll be we'll be fine. We'll be great. You know, uh, so that that's where I feel that we need to step up and, um, you know, evolve. And I think once we evolve, we'll be fine. You know, so that's pretty much it for the Georgia Southern, you know, Georgia State game, the rivalry. They're going to be in Paulson on Saturday. I'm going to be watching that game. I'm giving my post game thoughts and everything. But right now. I don't feel that we're in position to even talk about 
looking at these guys as an inferior right now. They have a better record than us this year. They're uh, leading us in. They're they're better than us in the divi- in the division. We're at the bottom of the East Division right now. They have a four three lead on us, and their coach is sitting here telling us how they really feel about us. We need to really get uh, get it in gear and do something about this team in Atlanta because we're more than capable of competing and beating this team. So we need to get on that. Before I go, I want to jump over to the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not going to talk too much about them. It's not much to say. A couple of players, um, uh, well, I ain't going to say a couple. Of, I know one player got cut was TJ Green. I hate to see that. I thought he did pretty good. Had, didn't have a good game against Washington. So, um, you know, I guess we decided to let him go. I know we got some other guys coming in to work. I know Corey Coleman, I think that's his name, wide receiver, was bought in. Um, for a workout, so that's going to be interesting to see what we're going to do in the receiver side of things. Um, it's kind of shaky about trying to get him in in the fold, but that that's another story for another day. I'll talk about that if he actually makes it on the roster. But we're going into Carolina. Well, Carolina's coming to Atlanta to play us. Sam Darnold was uh, benched or knocked out. I can't remember. I didn't watch the game. I thought he was pulled from the game, but yeah, I thought he was knocked out of the game, but somebody said he was pulled from the game. We're probably looking at P.J. Walker. Now, don't make no mistake. P.J. Walker came from the XFL. He can't play. Don't get me wrong. He can play. So that just because he's not playing, Darnold is not playing, that doesn't mean things can't go well for them. Now, they also have some other issues. I think McCaffrey's out. They're kind of backsliding a little bit, losing a few games. Um, so I think this is a good time for us as the Atlanta Falcons on the incline should be able to get this team uh, uh, off of their rocker and I mean, you know, off their square, and we should be able to win this game at home. So I'm not really talking about too much in this game as far as regard like I'm doing a Georgia Southern game, but I will tell you this. I love what Kyle Pitts is doing and uh, Cordell Patterson. Those two guys are doing some awesome work right there. I love this, to see what they're doing. It's great to see the offense actually moving a little bit. Calvin really did pretty good. Russell Gage got a really nice touchdown pass. Zacchaeus, you know, he had a catch. You know, Hayden Hurst even did pretty well. I want to see more of the running game. I want to see the running game make it more of a balance. But right now, I cannot be mad at what the Falcons are doing right now. People want to talk about, oh, these guys are ble- beating inferior teams. Everybody play inferior teams every week. And every team, every team that plays an inferior team, they're expected to beat them. So the Falcons right now going up against the Panthers. Panthers look like they're slightly below what the Falcons are right now, so the Falcons should win that game. Then we're going to New Orleans, and we'll talk about that game once that comes up. But like I said, I don't have much to say about the Falcons. I wanted to make this more about Georgia Southern and what they're doing. But like I said, it's not much to say. Everybody's pretty much back healthy. A.J. Terrell is in, is, is not necessarily in the concussion protocol. He had a, a slight injury. He did have limited practice. Also, you had, um, oh goodness, you had another player that was limited practice as well. I can't remember his name. Please forgive me. I'm sorry about that. But I talked about that on my short video um, on YouTube. You can check that out. But for the most part, everybody's pretty much, you know, somewhat healthy. It looked like everybody's going to be playing. So uh, I I expect the Falcons to win that game. And um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm really excited about this. Um, Unfortunately, you know, the Braves did not win their game. So uh, they're going 1-1 back to Atlanta. You can't ask for more than that. We split the series. We split the the home games, took a home field advantage. So we got three in Atlanta, I think. I think it's three in Atlanta. So we should be able to do some big things against the Houston Astros. So let's let's go and let's see how that goes. Thank you, guys. This is about to the, end, the ending of this podcast, this show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I was a little bit rough on – our Georgia Southern Eagles, but look, it needs to be said. Georgia State is not playing around. We need to treat this team with some some respect, and we need to slap this team up and down Paulson Stadium on Saturday. We need to do that. Hopefully we will, and I'll be back to talk about it, and uh, that'll be great. Like I said, this is the close. Thank you guys for making it this far. If you uh, haven't already, hit the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on Apple, uh, Spotify, Anchor, uh, and any other platform, Podcast Addict, any of those places that you're listening to this, give this a good rating. I try my best to put out the best content possible, and I try to do my best for you guys. So hopefully you guys really uh, enjoyed. Give me a, some feedback. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys on the next one.
All right, y'all. Y'all be easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace.